Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Muscovy for EU4 1.34 Lions of the North. So Muscovy is a nation located in the eastern half of Europe and it's definitely one of the most powerful nations at the start of the game in 1444. And even though I've seen a bunch of people recommend Muscovy for newer players, I do think that newer players might struggle playing with Muscovy and they may face problems such as manpower, income and religious disunity. But by using this guide you will have an easy and fun campaign, you'll go on to dominate the northeast portion of Europe, go on to beat up the hordes, expand in Scandinavia, in Poland and Lithuania, in the Caucasus, and then when you form Russia, you'll go on to dominate the entirety of Eurasia. And before we begin, if you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot. And boys, consider subscribing, I'm trying to hit 100k subs before New Year's, and maybe with your support, we can do it. Let's take a look at what we need to do as Muscovy. Alright, alright, here we are as Muscovy, and as you all know, we start off as an Orthodox nation, and we do have a unique government reform, a Russian principality, that gives us minus one national unrest, plus 5% tax, and plus 100 gov cap. Muscovite ideas are pretty good, even though Russian ones are way better. We start off with diplomatic relations, plus one, and plus 10% shock damage, which is actually really strong, and then we got tax, yearly Republican tradition, missionary strength and tolerance of the true faith, and morale, and then the rest of them don't matter, because by that point, you will have formed Russia. As Muscovy, of course, we do also start off with five vessels, Puskov, Below Zero, Yaroslavl, Rostov, and Perm, and we're going to be integrating all of them. But first, you can go into your subjects and tell all of these guys to siege. Next, we're going to go into our estates and summon the Diet. You can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're going to give the Patriarchs Religious State and Clerical Advisory Council, along with Religious Diplomats. Then we're going to give the Boyars Primacy of the Boyars, Increased Levies, and Aristocratic Counselors, along with the Boyars Integration Policy. And then we're going to give the Burgers Land of Commerce, Patronage of the Arts, Commercial Advisory Board, and Indebted to the Burgers. Finally, we're going to give the Cossacks Recruit Cossack Leaders and Prime Herding Rights. Then we're going to seize land. Because we gave the Boyars the Boyars Integration Policy, some subjects may be disloyal, but that's not a problem at all. Next, you can go ahead and go into your rivals and make sure to rival Novgorod and whichever other available rivals you have. I have Lithuania and Denmark. At the start, we are losing money, but we are going to be hiring three advisors right off the bat. And you will notice that we're already focusing on admin. That's how the game starts. Leave it like that. Get whichever level one admin advisor you want. I'm going to get this tax guy. Get a diplo rep or improve relations level one dip advisor minor level two so i'm gonna get this trade efficiency guy and get a morale discipline manpower or fort defense level one mill advisor i have this manpower guy next we need to kickstart our mission tree by getting this mission done which will give us perma claims on novgorod and as you can see we need our army to be a hundred percent of our force limit and right now our army is 26 out of 36 so what we're gonna do is simply take both of our armies over to moscow to rearrange it and then build some more armies we do also have two free diplomats with one, we're going to start improving with our own subjects, and then with another one, we are going to start spying on Kazan. We don't need any allies as Muscovy right at the start, although later we will be trying to ally someone like Austria, Bohemia, or Hungary if they're strong enough. Maybe someone like England, Castile, or France too. We will want to get one strong ally over in Europe. Now it's time to wait for our armies to merge. Once our armies are together, we are going to take this army right here and get three infantry regiments out of it, along with three cavalry regiments as well, and take them somewhere else. This is your main stack right here, and we do already start start off with a general. Next we're gonna go into our mercenary companies and hire the Grand Company just like that and in this one province where you've sent your smaller stack you're also going to recruit an infantry regiment, just like that. Once the Grand Company and the infantry regiment have been recruited, you will be able to take the mission Invade Novgorod, which gives us perma claims on everything that Novgorod owns. I also have some claims on Tver and this province right here from an estate agenda. And now it's time to see who Novgorod have allied. And in my case, they actually haven't allied anyone. If they allied Lithuania, you could wait until Poland PU's Lithuania and then fight Novgorod. But if not, you're good to go right off the bat. So once you take that mission, Recall your diplomat that's improving with your boys and go ahead and declare on Novgorod. I recommend declaring for the province of Neva and go ahead and fight this war. It should be pretty easy. If Novgorod isn't allied to anyone big, they might be allied to Odoyev or Ryazan, in which case you should try and co-belligerent them if you can and full annex them as well. In this war, you can just send your grand company to do some sieging, just like I'm gonna do right here, and then let your vassals do the rest of the work. We wanna conserve manpower here. At this point, you can take this smaller stack right here and delete these cavalry regiments because they are pretty expensive. Just these three are costing us a ducat and a half per month. Try not to use your main army in this war, 
like I said, we're saving manpower. Manpower is going to be a problem for a lot of people at the start of the game as Muscovy. These are all provinces that get very high attrition and later on in the winter, and this is a very underutilized map mode, it is going to be even higher because winter is severe in this region. We want to save the manpower for when we fight the hordes. Once you get at least one claim on Kazan, recall that diplomat and go ahead and spy on the Great Horde. We want to get at least one claim on them as well. Once you get a spy network going on the Great Horde, spy on one of Tver, Odoyev, or Ryazan. And once your super easy first war with Novgorod is done, what you are going to do is take all of these border provinces right here so we can prevent Poland, Lithuania, or the Kalmar Union from pushing into them and take provinces that we want and aside from that once you do take all the border provinces then you can take whatever you want i'm gonna do something like this in my case and then later in our second war we are gonna full annex them this is gonna be quite a lot of ae but they're orthodox so no one will care the bigger problem is all of those admin points but it's just something that we have to deal with and i'm also gonna take 13.2 ducats and that's your first war done. You've taken the border provinces with Novgorod and a few more provinces too. Now it's time to core up those provinces and then get ready for our next war, which is either going to be versus one of these three small guys or, if we have an opportunity, versus one of these two hordes. After the war is done, you can lower army maintenance and turn off your forts and you can go ahead and delete the Grand Company. We can hire the Free Company instead of it later. Once you've cored everything up, it's time to look for your next war, and like I said, it's gonna be either versus Tver, Odoyev, Ryazan, or one of the hordes. In my case, I'm gonna declare on Tver right here, co-belligerent Ryazan, because they're a tributary of the Great Horde, and I'm gonna make the Great Horde end their alliance with Uzbek, so I have an easier time fighting them, later. So out of any of those five nations, look for the easiest one to fight. And of course, if you're fighting the hordes, be careful not to fight them in step terrain. And also, it might be a good idea to wait a bit to fight them, because as we all know, the hordes start off without feudalism. So we are gonna out-tech them very, very quickly. And you can catch them with one or two mil techs above them, in which case you can crush them, and you don't need to worry about not fighting them in the step provinces. But here goes my second war, versus Tver. And once the war with whoever you're fighting is done, preferably one of the smaller Russian guys, it is time to full annex whoever you're fighting. Keep in mind that full annexing Tver, Otoyev, and Ryazan will be super expensive because those provinces are already in our states. As we can see right here, I am going to full annex Ryazan and that's going to be 387 admin points. And if I full annex Tver as well, it's going to be 235. So that's around 600 and something admin points. So I am going to separate piece Ryazan and full annex them and peace out Tver and full annex them as well. Don't worry about aggressive expansion when fighting the orthodox guys. But now that your second war is done, preferably versus these smaller guys, it's time to chill, wait to get tech over the hordes, and also boost the spawning of the Renaissance in our capital Moscow, since by this point it's probably already appeared. So activate the Encourage Development State Edict in Moscow and push it up to 30. After that you can stop or you can keep going if you want to, to get it faster. Of course in Moscow we also have the Kremlin at tier 1 and it gives us some local stuff. Not that important for now and honestly not that important either at tier 3. Regiment costs isn't that good. Of course make sure to dev for the Renaissance only if you have tech 4 in all categories. Don't use up your points before you get tech 4 in all categories. Once 10 years have passed it is time to start annexing our subjects. Like I said we do have 5 of them and I do recommend annexing Puskov or Yaroslavl first since they have centers of trade in the Novgorod trade node. I'm gonna go with Yaroslavl here simply because I have 190 opinion with them and not with Puskov. And there we go. If at this point you still have any small Russian guys that aren't your vassals go ahead and fight them as as well. In my case, all three of them have been annexed because I just fought Tver and Ryazan, and Ryazan ate up Odoya. If you've also annexed them like me, it's still chilling time and diving for the Renaissance and building a few buildings. During this point, I've been building some marketplaces in the center of trade provinces. After we get the Renaissance, or when we notice that we are two techs ahead of these guys, then we'll declare on them. And there we go, I've annexed Yaroslavl. For your tier 2 government reform in the early game, while you're still Muscovy, I do recommend taking strength and noble privileges. However, later, when you become Russia and when you have all that manpower from their national ideas and from all that patriarch authority that we're gonna farm, you should swap over to compromise with the nobility or to noble officer core. But for now, while we're still Muscovy, strength and noble privileges. Of course, once you annex your first subject, you can go ahead and annex another one. Once you've done a little bit of chilling after conquering the small Russian guys, it's time to move on with the hordes, and by this point, you should have a tech advantage over some of them. Now, the Great Horde right here just got beat up by Kazan and Gazikumuk, and they don't have any allies. So, this is a perfect opportunity for me to declare on them. Check and see which of the two hordes that you border at the start, the Great Horde or Kazan, is easier to fight first, and 
then simply go ahead and fight whichever is easiest. I'm gonna go ahead and declare on the Great Horde. And now that my war with the Great Horde is done, I will actually be vassalizing them because we do have a lot of cores here that I can reconquer from Kazan and Gazikumuk, but most likely when you're fighting them or Kazan, you will be taking as much as you can from them. If you fight the Great Horde, like I said, take as much as you can. If you're fighting Kazan, however, make sure to take the gold mine in Bashgird in your first war. That is pretty important. So, like I said, I'll be vassalizing the Great Horde and taking all of their money. And that's my first war with the Hordes done. Now it's time to chill a little bit more and fight another Horde, or maybe we could even fight the Livonian Order. So that's why at this point, after we fought the first Horde, we're gonna go ahead and start spying on the Livonian Order. We will get claims on these guys later, but maybe we'll be faster than our mission tree and we don't want to wait around on those claims. After you've pushed Muscovy up to 30 dev and have tech 4 in all categories, you can go ahead and unfocus from admin. When you get to around 1460, make sure to lower autonomy because it will have been increasing all of this time because we don't have enough crownland. So make sure to lower autonomy, you will have to fight some rebels due to this, but you will gain more tax, more trade income, and more manpower. And by lowering autonomy in every single province that I could, I went from making 3.75 ducats to 11.73. Pretty big difference. Of course, as you all know, as a Russian nation, we do have the unique Russian abilities. This one lowers autonomy, this one lowers rebel progress, and this one gives us Streltsy. When you can do these, do them. I'm gonna lower autonomy now. And just like that, at this point, I've also annexed Puskov. Once you've chilled a bit, it's time to move on with our next wars, once again fighting some of the guys down here, if your truce with Novgorod still hasn't expired. If it has expired, go ahead and hit Novgorod again. In my case right here, Gazi Kumuk seems to be the easiest nation to fight, so I'm gonna declare on them and retake the Great Horde's cores, and then take the rest of them for myself. Fight whichever of these guys is the easiest to fight. There's no particular order. If some of you don't know this, when you have a yearly inflation reduction guy and a trade efficiency guy, you can get the event Radical Reforms, where you can fire both of them for 200 and admin diplo points. What you want to do before taking this option is firing them here manually, then take this to get the points and then just hire them back because they are really good advisors. Once you get admin tech 5, and I just did because I embraced the renaissance, I did take out a loan to embrace it, it doesn't matter. For your first idea group as Muscovy, I recommend trade ideas. This will help us make a lot more money since we aren't that rich right at the start and with all of these trade nodes that we're going to be conquering this way, we do need to route all of this trade to Novgorod and later maybe maybe even the Baltic Sea or Lubeck. So trade ideas for your first idea group. And now that the Gazikumuk has unconditionally surrendered, I am gonna piece them out and make them give all of the cores back to the Great Horde, and then I'm gonna take this province for myself. I don't know why I can't take these. And that's my war with Gazikumuk done. At this point, I'm also gonna annex another vassal, Rostov. Now that my truce with Novgorod is up, I'm gonna declare my second war against them and full annex them. You're gonna do the same once your truce with them is up as well. And like I said, once you defeat Novgorod in your second war, you're simply gonna go ahead and full annex them, just like that. Once you do full annex Novgorod, you will be able to take this mission right here, where you gain permaclaims on the entire Russia region and some dev in the province of Novgorod. And if by this point, you've somehow managed to annex all of your smaller vassals except for Perm, you will also be able to take this mission right here. At this point, I'm also gonna annex my final small vassal. For your first age ability, I recommend taking Adaptive Combat Terrain. This is because Muscovy is in woods. We do have a lot of wood provinces that we're gonna fight them, so that bonus is gonna be nice. We're not really expanding that quickly to take use of the minus 10% aggressive expansion. Or we are expanding quickly, but not enough into the same types of nations. Once you've full annexed Novgorod, it's time to shift your focus back to the Hordes and do your second or third war against them. In my case, I am going to be declaring on Kazan here. Even though they're allied to these very strong nations like Uzbek and Chagatai, this is a winnable war because at this point we have a severe tech advantage. So I'm just going to declare a reconquest for one of the Great Hordes cores. And in this war, I'll also make Crimea end their alliance with the Ottomans. Take advantage of opportunities like that, because in your game, Crimea might also be allied to the Ottomans. Now that I've annexed below zero, I can take this mission where we gain a bunch of dev in the capitals of our former vassals, and we also gain permaclaims on a bunch of areas like this. And now that my war with Kazan is done, and it was very annoying having to go and siege down Chagatai, here's what I'm gonna take from them. And you might want to take something similar. Like I said, make sure to take the gold mine over in the province of Bashgird that will help fund our economy, and then I'm gonna do something like this right here to prevent any other nations from fighting them as well. Actually, this is gonna be about enough since I don't want to spend too much admin points. And that's my war with Kazan done. 
Take as much as you can from these hordes. Aggressive expansion isn't really a worry against them either. Where we do want to pay attention on aggressive expansion is when we fight the Kalmar Union or Poland-Lithuania. At this point, you will probably be over Govcap, and then you can give the Cossacks Cossack land rights and the Patriarchs Patriarch land rights. There we go. For your tier 3 government reform, I recommend taking expanded royal court. For your second idea group as Muscovy, I recommend taking religious ideas. This will help us out quite a lot because there are a lot of non-orthodox provinces that we're gonna conquer and of course with this CB we'll be able to fight anyone and everyone. Religious meshes very well with Muscovy's and later Russia's ideas as well and honestly as an orthodox nation it's pretty much a crime not to take religious ideas. At this point I'm gonna start annexing my final of the five original vassals perm. By this point, you should be annexing your final vassal as well, or you may have already annexed all of them. Once you core up the gold mine that you took from Kazan, make sure to state that up and activate the Encourage Development State Edict and dev it up to 10 production. It is going to be very painful because it is in mountains, so it is going to cost a lot. Maybe you could also give the icon for development discount if you want to get it a little bit cheaper, but make sure to dev it up to 10 production. This is necessary to fund our conquests, at least for now. At this point, I've got my first European ally and I've allied the nation of Bohemia. Once we've dealt with all the small guys, Novgorod, and chopped one to three hordes down to size, it's time to make our next move. And that is going to be our first major war, where we're either going to fight Poland-Lithuania or the Kalmar Union. In my case right here, Poland has even gotten hungry as a junior partner through conquest, but this may have backfired on them a little bit because they have gotten coalitioned by the entirety of the HRE. So that's why I'm going to be declaring on them and hoping that the coalition also fires, which is going to make this war very easy. And besides, the Kelmar Union is annoying to fight with all those crossings and island capital forts. So I'm getting ready for that war now. You should be doing the same, either getting ready to fight the Commonwealth or the Kalmar Union. And like I said, now I'll be declaring on Poland and conquering some of these provinces up here that they've gotten from the Livonian Order. Maybe you've already fought the Livonian Order and have this, but if you don't, go ahead and take it from whoever conquered it. And don't worry if you can't declare on Poland or the Kalmar Union if you're not feeling strong enough. Just keep on chopping the hordes down to size even more, expanding over here in this region and in this region. Declare on these guys whenever you're ready. There's totally not a need to do it now. I'm gonna declare for Riga. Once you annex your final subject perm, you will be able to take this mission. At this point, I've also called in my ally Bohemia. I did get enough favors. And just as I predicted, the coalition did declare on Poland and they are in a lot of trouble. Obviously, this does make it easier for me to fight them, but that is precisely why I declare on them. If this coalition didn't exist, maybe I would have declared on the Kalmar Union. And there we go, now that I've defeated Poland and this is what happened to them from that coalition war, they just made them pop out Galicia, Bohemia and the Ducal Prussia, and they're also losing to the Ottomans now. What I'm gonna take in my war right here is everything over here where the Livonian Order was along with Riga and these two provinces from Lithuania which are in the region of Russia. If you already have this, if you've already taken it from the Livonian Order, then start conquering Lithuania and provinces in the Kiev trade node. Those are some provinces that we want. And that's mine, and maybe your first war versus Poland. This is a little something what your conquest should look like. After you've dealt with one of the big powers, either the Kalmar Union or the Commonwealth, it's time to shift your sights back to the hordes, and that is where we open up a couple of routes of expansion after dealing with the initial nations. You're gonna do one war over in this region, and then push over here into different culture and different religion nations to minimize the aggressive expansion. Then you can go back up north maybe, expand in Scandinavia, then turn down south to the Caucasus, and then shift your focus in various zones of expansion. Now that I'm done with the Commonwealth, I will be turning my sights back to the hordes and trying to take as much of Kazan as I can. Once again, I'm going to do a reconquest for the Great Hordes cores because obviously I forgot to do that earlier. So don't make the same mistake that I did. And after you unlock this idea in Religious, that is when your conversions will really start rolling. I've already started converting some Catholic provinces that I conquered, and once again, after you finish up Religious completely, you will have no issue converting everything that you've conquered. And now that I've defeated Kazan, I will be taking as much as I can from them and almost full annexing them, leaving these three provinces for later because I can't full annex them anyway. So why not save on some admin points now? For your tier 4 government reform, I recommend taking grant land to the monasteries mainly for that 0.2 yearly patriarch authority. This is going to help us out quite a lot. 
and by around the 1490s, your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we started off as Muscovy, and of course, our first war was versus Novgorod, where we took the border provinces. After that, we took care of the small Russian nations that weren't our vassals, Odoyev, Tver, and Ryazan. And after that, if you felt strong enough, you could have fought one of the two hordes that we border, the Great Horde or Kazan. In my case, I vassalized the Great Horde to reconquer their cores, but in your case, you have probably directly conquered their provinces. And you should have fought Kazan by now as well, at least once and taken their gold producing province. After you've dealt with the hordes once or twice, you should have turned back on Novgorod and full annexed them, and after that, keep pushing into the hordes, and after you felt powerful enough, you could have declared either on the Commonwealth or on the Kalmar Union and expanded over here in the Baltic or in Lithuania or maybe in Finland, Sweden, and Norway. And by around the 1490s, you should look a little something like this. In my game right here, I have 796 dev, about 800 if I annex the Great Horde, and that's about what you should have as well. 700 to 900 dev is pretty standard if you're going for the chill route. Of course, you could be a lot more aggressive, but then again, if you are a lot more aggressive, then this guide isn't really meant for you. Of course, during this point, we haven't only been conquering we have also been improving our nation and even though you will struggle with cash and manpower at least in the first two to three decades in the game after that once you take over Novgorod and get a bigger foothold on the Novgorod trade node and after you get the gold mine over here from Kazan money won't be an issue anymore so that's why you should have been building buildings. I have upgraded most of my centers of trade to level two, at least all of the ones that are in the states. And I have built a bunch of marketplaces in all the center of trade provinces, as we can see right here. And I've also been building workshops in the high value trade good provinces, as we can see right here, copper, cloth, iron, you already know the high value trade good provinces. And later, once the colonizers start colonizing North America and the fur trade kicks off, and then the price of fur will actually go up from two ducats to well more than that i can't remember exactly you should build workshops in the fur provinces as well and of course you could also build them now as well if you have some spare cash preemptively so you're ready for later a couple of churches have also been built here and there a couple of army buildings have been built here and there and that's pretty much what your construction should look like by now at this point i don't have a navy maybe you have already established a couple of light ship fleets to protect trade in the baltic sea and that of course is where you're gonna move your main trade node later of course if you're even planning on expanding this way move it to the baltic sea and if you're going even further westward ideally you'd want to take it to lubeck or if you're going all out you should move it to the English Channel, but Novgorod will be your main trade node for most of the game, and then you should switch to the Baltic Sea. And after this point, you're going to continue to expand in the same regions that we've already been expanding in. Now I'm going to use the console right here to reveal the map and to show you guys where you should conquer. And as we can see, this is the whole world, and if we go into the region map mode, basically, as Russia, what you want to focus on in the early game is this region right here, from the Baltic to Caucasia, basically these regions right here. And of course, later on, when you form Russia, you're going to colonize all of these uncolonized provinces with the special Russian ability and you do want to go conquer the Ural, West Siberia, East Siberia, Central Asia, Mongolia, and Manchuria. Those are sort of the regions you should go for. And if you're planning going all out, you should push into Caucasia, Persia, Khorasan, maybe North China, Korea, and provinces like that. And of course, later on, you would want to push into Poland, Carpathia, the Balkans, and Anatolia. And you should aim to own sort of this portion of the world right here. You'll continue to expand in the hordes. You're already more powerful than pretty much any of them. You will want to get a strong ally or two in Europe and a strong ally or two in Asia to help you beat up the big guys maybe i'd ally someone like france and austria to help me beat up the ottomans maybe i'd ally some indian nation to help me beat up the timurids since they're pretty big in my game and you shouldn't have any trouble fighting ming of course if you catch them at low mandate of course for our first two idea groups we took trade and religious that should be your opener as well and since this is a massive blobbing campaign for your third idea group i recommend diplomatic the diplomats will help you avoid coalitions the improved relations is great maybe you'll rack up a couple of personal unions with this option right here and the province war score cost is definitely very necessary and then for your fourth idea group i recommend taking admin the ccr will be excellent cheaper cores the merc stuff is great too although you won't really be using mercs that much as muscovy and then the gov cap is definitely very very needed because we will be blobbing out and we're already having problems with governing capacity by this point so trade religious diplo admin and then the last four are up to you you could go for some mill ones honestly of course you will want to take patriarch authority as high as you can we get a lot of bonuses from 
format, especially manpower and missionary strength is going to be super, super useful. Of course, you're going to convert everything that you've conquered. You're going to be using this CB right here once you wrap up religious ideas. And then at Admin Tech 10, you'll be forming Russia, gaining the extremely powerful Russian Tsardom government type, which gives us manpower, gov cap, and lots of other good things. For your tier 5 government reform, you should go with meritocratic recruitment or maybe dynastic administration. For tier 6, you should take royal decree. For tier 7, you should take embrace the economic theory. For tier 8, you should take this one. For tier 9, you should take kingdom for the people. However, if you're struggling with gov cap, you should take let us and for tier 10, you should take political absolutism. And like I said, Baron, the 1490s, your realm should look a little something like this. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash theredhawklive. And if you want to catch up on stuff from over there, you can subscribe to the second channel. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot. And if you want to see more guides like this or more U4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. And you can become a member today and join the discord the link is in the description thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another eu4 video